Hi guys, welcome to this page of the notes. What we're gonna do now is on the previous page, we looked at example problems where you set up those trig ratios and given an angle, you were able to find one of the missing sides of the right triangle. Now what we're gonna do is take a look at how you find the angle measure, right? Given the ratio of the sides. Again, we're looking at sine and cosine in this set of notes. And so what we've got here are the ratios we saw from the very front of the notes on the front page, right? You take the sine of the angle and it's equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So these are the ratios that we've saw on the front page of the notes and we just used these ratios to solve problems on the previous page where you're solving for either the opposite or the hypotenuse given an angle or given an angle solving for the adjacent or the hypotenuse. We, we just did those problems. What we want to do now is solve for the angle measure. What if I want to know what is the measure of the angle? Well, we saw this in the previous section when we worked with tangent. What you'll need to do in order to solve for the angle measure is take the inverse tangent of the ratio. Sine and cosine will work the exact same way. If I take the inverse sine of the ratio, opposite over hypotenuse, that'll give me the measure of the angle. Or if I take the inverse cosine of the ratio, adjacent over hypotenuse, that will give me the measure of the angle. Once again, on every calculator, you will have a sine, cosine, and tangent button, and more than likely on your calculator, the inverse trig function will just be the second function on your calculator button. So they'll be written right above the sine, cosine, and tangent button. You'll see sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse, and it'll be in the same color as whatever button you have to push in order to get that inverse trig function. Again, Casio, Sharps, and Texas Instruments are sometimes a little different in where the buttons are placed, uh, and that second function button isn't always the same color, but uh, you'll figure out your calculator. Uh, it, it's not, it's pretty user-friendly. Um, you'll, you'll figure it out. So here, here we go, let's try a couple of these. Let's find the measure of the angle. All right, so here's what I got for you. I want you to find the acute angle measures in the triangle PQR to the nearest degree. Here we go. Find the measure of angle R. All right, up first. Boom. Here's R right here. All right, since that is R, now I need to figure out what have I been given. Well, if this is R, that makes 7 the opposite. And that makes 13. Careful. Careful. Look. It's the longest side. This would be adjacent. 13 is actually the hypotenuse. Well, that means that I know the opposite and the hypotenuse. So which trig function do I need to use to find the angle? I don't have a choice. I have to use the inverse sine. So I know that the inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse will be equal to the measure of angle R, which is what I'm trying to find. Plug and chug. It will be the inverse sine of opposite, which is 7, over the hypotenuse, which is 13. Again, you will simply do inverse sine. It's that function on your calculator. 7 divided by 13. Hit enter, and you should get, oh, sorry, round to the nearest degree, you'll get a decimal, but rounding should get you 36 degrees. Now, once again, we saw this before when we were doing the tangent function. Guys, keep it, you now know two of the three angles, right? This one's 90. You just figured out this one was 36. You could do the triangle sum theorem, which says that all three angles must sum to 180 degrees. So 90 plus 36, subtract it from 180 and you'll get angle P. You could do that. Or just do the inverse trig function. Here's angle P right there, angle P. Well, if that's angle P, what do I know? Well, that means now that seven would be the adjacent side because it's right next to the angle and 13 is, well, it's still the hypotenuse. Well, adjacent hypotenuse, that's cosine. So, inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to the measure of angle P. And plug and chug, guys. 
cosine minus 1 of 7. over 13 is equal to, again, cosine, the inverse cosine of 7 divided by 13. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. Just hit enter. You're going to get a decimal, but if you round to the nearest degree, you'll get 54 degrees. So whether you use the triangle sum theorem or just go ahead and do the inverse, uh, inverse cosine function, you'll get a measure of 54 degrees for angle P. Uh, I got another one for you here. Let's go ahead and try this one. If it'll slide up. There we go. Now we're sliding. Okay, here we go. Uh, I want you to find the measure of angle Y. All right, here's Y right here. All right, what do I know? Well, this is angle Y. That makes 14 the adjacent, and 23 is the hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse, adjacent. Yeah, we're using cosine. So we're going to do the inverse cosine of adjacent over the hypotenuse. The measure of angle Y. Plug and chug. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. 14 over 23. And uh, round to the nearest degree, I get 53 degrees. 53 degrees for the measure of angle Y. Once again, you could certainly use the triangle sum theorem because you now know 90 and 53, add them up, subtract it from 180, find Z. Or, go ahead and do the inverse trig function. If this is Z, that means 14 is now the opposite side, opposite, 23 is still the hypotenuse, and that's going to be sine. So the inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse is equal to the measure of angle Z. Plug and chug, don't fat finger something on your calculator. The inverse sine of 14, not 32, 23, 14 divided by 23 is going to be equal to, again, round to the nearest degree. It'll come out to be a decimal. You just round it to the nearest degree, and you get 37 degrees. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this set of videos. What we've now looked at, right, are going to be the sine and the cosine function, both solving uh, for one of the missing sides of a right triangle using those ratios, or given the links of the sides, solving for the unknown angle measure. Um, what we've now seen is the tangent, the sine and the cosine, so all three trig functions, um, and how we solve right triangles for those. Once again, like I said, I had a great time taking a look at this with you, and I'll see you guys next time.